Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, we got a little bit of jazz and R&B and classic and, well, you know, sometimes we perform masquerades, you know, because the world, <laughs> the world is a masquerade. Ladies and gentlemen, I just need all of you guys to understand. This is the great George Benson, and he's going to ask, are we really happy? Come on, George, let him know. And I'm not going to sing with George because he's too good to be having me sing along with him this day because I was in a good mood, everybody. But as he is about to ask you guys in just a moment, he's going to ask you, are you happy? Are we really happy here in with this lonely game we're playing? Hey, you know, looking for words? Looking for words, words to say. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I am so glad that we are here today. We're going to accept some cookies, okay? They don't sell our data. I don't know this site. I've never been to this site before, but I asked a question. And you know, I decided if I'm going to ask a question, from time to time, I'm going to let you guys know what I am looking up. Because see, I talk about so many different things, but what you guys don't realize is it all comes back to trust. We've been talking about trust from the very beginning. Do you guys understand? They call it a deed of trust. There's a grantler, grantor, a settler, which is a grantor, a testator, which is a grantor, a trustor, which is the grantor. Then there's a beneficiary. There's no other name for a beneficiary because a beneficiary benefits from the trust. And then there's that trustee. Now, there, there are several words for trustees, and I know y'all can think of a quite a few words for trustees. But anyway, <laughs> anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, those are the three elements of a trust. They actually claim there are four elements, but we don't care. What I asked Google was, what are the elements of a trust? So, then I asked Google, wait, hold on, forget about the elements, because all of our trust agreements already have the elements in it. Because we have templates and they already have the elements in it. We've already done that. So what's the best type of trust to have? So this site says understanding the three primary types of trust. Hold on. Primary. Ladies and gentlemen, there's going to be some wind in the background because I told you we get a breeze here every day. Three times, four times a day. This morning we didn't have a breeze. But, you know, when it heats up outside, whoa, ho, ho. It's 91 degrees outside. So when it heats up outside, that change in barometric pressure, you know that thing that I have such a hard time with during the spring and the fall, that change in barometric pressure allows the air, the dense air and the cold air to hit each other and say, ah, that's what you get, mother. Okay, and when they do that, it causes turbulence in our jet stream. And that causes the wind to blow. It's a mechanism. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? As the wind blows, so things cool down here. And see, let, let me, let me, hey, George, you mind if I explain this to him? George says, hey, he don't mind, okay? Me and George go way back, y'all. Like rocking chairs? Whew, man. Um... Ladies and gentlemen, let me explain something to y'all. See, the reason why I opted for the fifth wheel trailer temporarily is because it already has all the insulation. If I had tried to construct something, I would have had to put in the insulation. With my energy levels, yes, I had already calculated the energy levels. With my energy levels being depleted, especially during the summer. Summer is the worst time for me because it's too hot. So my body is trying to regulate my temperature. So... There's a lot of energy my body is expending trying to keep my body cool when the temperature is going up, which is why there are certain days, if I don't anticipate, that's why I went and bought some uh, digital thermometers from Amazon, okay? I got some digital thermometers from Amazon, and I keep an eye on that. It lets me know, like, tomorrow, it 
tells me the temperature is going to be 91 degrees. Here. Okay, that's fine. The same as today. So see, I can prepare in advance for the temperature. Now, if it said 120, then we would have a problem. I would really have to do some adjustments. I would have to lessen the amount of things that I do during the day, such as yesterday. I got up first thing in the morning and I worked on all of the awnings on the trailer. Why? Because the awnings had not been opened in years for this particular trailer because of where it was parked. This was parked at someone's home. So they didn't need the awnings because there were trees everywhere. So I had to go and adjust those and all the straps had dry rotted. So look, they charge you, pay attention, for a piece of cloth, $19. All it has is a metal plastic, or not a metal, but a plastic piece on the other end and a loop on one end. My grandmama can do that with a needle, throw it in a piece of a toy from a child to a little thing. $19? What the? And I need one, two, three, four, five of those little straps. No, six for the main awning. Six of them. What? What the? Why would? You better be, I'm not going to spend no $60 for no stupid straps. So I have these ropes that I got from Walmart. They're clothing line ropes. They're not that thick, but they're thick enough to hold the weight of the awning. And I'm using that to hold it in place. Why? Because, again, I'm not doing it for aesthetics. I'm doing it because as I shade the windows, the air that blows through is cooler, believe it or not. And that makes a big difference. A big difference, mama! Okay. Uh, been thinking about my mother this day you know i i can't really understand why i believe it might be because of the stupid holiday thing because we did like everybody else on these days our family was always together on these days on these long weekends like i said we didn't go outside the house in the neighborhood at all when i was a kid we stayed inside because my mother didn't like the neighborhood, didn't trust the neighborhood. I lived in a very violent neighborhood, one of the most violent in Los Angeles County. So don't ask any of your business. Stop being so nosy. Sit, sit, go, no, no, go back and sit down in the corner. Oh, no, what you being so nosy for? Stop, stop asking questions. You ain't, ain't, ain't even part of the subject matter. Focus on the conversation. Don't focus on the words. What the? Okay. Any, anyway, ladies and gentlemen. I've been thinking about my mamas, and what you guys don't know, and I'm saying this because I, at first I was telling myself I wasn't going to mention this to anybody, but I figured why not? Because my brothers and sisters, <laughs> in their ignorance, because they don't understand me, they think they understand me, but they don't understand me, my brothers and sisters believe, they're under the misguided assumption that I hated my mother. People, I love my mother with all my heart, and that woman knew that. At one point, I called my mother my best friend, and she and I had many a conversations about that. Why? And I was a grown man when that happened, because she and I used to talk all the time about everything. Okay, well, not every, every, everything, you know, but about everything. We talked about everything, all my problems and everything. I remember I was taking care of letting one of my cousins stay with me, and... <sighs> caused me so much stress one time that I called my mama up and I said, Mama, I am sorry. And she says, I know. I said, everything we put you through, I am sorry. I apologize for all of us, but especially me. She says, don't worry about it. I knew that eventually you would come to that understanding and you would realize. I said, you better believe it. And I didn't have to explain it to her. She knew. Like I told you, I, I came into the house one day, I was about 26 years old, and I came into the house, my sister's house, my mother was staying with my sister, and I walked in the house, I, I was coming to visit, and I came to LA for a special visit because I had some friends, and I said, hey, I'm just going to stop and see my friends, forget that, forget me going and, you know, hanging out with my friends here, I'm going to go see my real friends, the ones in Los Angeles, and I drove, man, it's a six hour drive especially if you're doing 70 miles an hour the whole trip so i took that six hour drive and converted it to a little bit over four from phoenix to los angeles made that trip only to find out that all my friends none of them had time 
Now, it was a surprise visit, but they didn't even have time to give me five minutes. I had to realize those are not my friends anymore. I was the guy who could get up and leave, go to another state, and for some stupid reason believe that although I move, those people are still my friends. That, that's still my boy. That, you know, that's still my, oh man, she and I, we go way back, you know? Only to find out that's not the case. I go on vacation for two years, 22 months. I come back and all of the ignorant mother that I knew prior to going in, who I used to talk with all the time, those mother sons of a, don't even talk to me, don't even call me. Now when I say, do they hate me, do they dislike me? No, that's not the case. They've gone on with their lives. So, I want you guys to understand what I say to myself when I think about that. I say, F them. My exact words are F them. I don't use an explicit, I just say F them because that's my phrase. Because I could care less about them. I do believe this is boys to men, ladies and gentlemen, and they're singing a song called The Color of Love in my background. But I'm bringing this up because, as I mentioned, I was thinking about my mother. And I was thinking about my brothers and sisters and how much, because I didn't go to my mother's funeral, they thought I hated her. Well, I'll give you guys the lowdown because you don't understand this aspect. The last time I spoke to my mother was 2010. And this is something, this is why I say I don't have any regrets. Uh, I believe in the resurrection fully. My mother and I will see each other again. Look, hey, he promised there's going to be a resurrection of the righteous and the unrighteous. Pay attention! That's a promise. That's a guarantee. I'm willing to wait around to see that work out. Okay? See, that's what faith requires. Faith requires that I, not you, that I be willing to put a little bit of confidence in that promise. That's all it requires. And I'm willing to have a little bit of faith. It's the size of a mustard grain, but I'm willing to have a little bit of faith. And those of you who are Jehovah's Witnesses who listen to these videos, shame on you. But anyway, those of you who are Jehovah's Witnesses, the theme of our assembly convention this year, hey, with a little bit of faith, I become powerful. Yay! Okay, getting back to the conversation. Why didn't I speak to my mother since 2010? Well, because I gave my mother her my word. You see, I don't like being cursed at. And some of you ignorant mother sit up here and curse at me through emails and stuff. That's why you see me make a big deal about it. I'm not going to tolerate it. I Pay attention. Oh, this is my song, ladies and gentlemen. This is home again. This is this is new edition. I don't even tolerate that from my own family members. My own family members are not allowed to curse at me. You people are not allowed to curse at me. Now, if you want to play me and think that I'm joking, go ahead and do it again. Okay, you will not be allowed to comment, communicate, or any way, near shape or form, make any suggestions or ask any questions regarding any form associated with me. I do not kid about that. I do not play about that. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are too intelligent to understand, let me explain it to you. There are certain things that I will not overlook. There are certain things that I will not tolerate. You have things in your life that you don't tolerate. You have things absolutely that you would never allow to happen. Okay, understand, you don't get to disrespect me like that. My own mother did it one time. Well, no, she did it more than once, but there was, when I told her, I said, no, I cannot allow you. I am not inside your house anymore. See, before I had to let you do it, but now I have the right to leave. So, I'm not going to allow you to do that again. She was upset about something. I don't know what it was to this day. But she decided to come at me wrong. I don't know what type of day she was having. But I gave her my word. My mother knows just like most people that I will break my neck and keep my word. Just like this morning at 5 o'clock in the morning. I normally wake up at 5 and go right back to sleep and wake up about 6.40, 7 o'clock. That's my routine. That's how I get through my day. Wake up, go back to sleep for about an hour and a half, and then get back up and take care of my day. Because I don't go to sleep until after 11 every night. Last night I was just too tired. I went to sleep at 10.30. Well, 10.48. But the same thing. Come on now. Tell them. My boy's confused, y'all. 
that's New Edition, everybody, and they're singing Home Again. One of the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eight, nine, ten, one hundred greatest songs by this group, ladies and gentlemen. All right, getting back to my mother, because see, some people want to, they think they know me, but they don't understand me. Because when I tell people something, they think that I'm going to change my mind. This is not about forgiving. My mother didn't do anything to offend me. I gave my mother my word. I told her I wouldn't allow it again. So, my, well, I'll let you guys know the, the story because that's what the audition is talking about. While I was in Puerto Rico, uh, 2012, from 2012 to 2016, that was the Puerto Rican ordeal. And I would not allow my brothers to let me know of any bad news. Because the situation is, I was too far away. Any bad news, there's nothing I can do about it. I could not, because I was focused on doing what I'm doing now, challenging the system. I could not be distracted. I could not allow any bad news. If somebody died, pay attention, there's nothing I can do about it. I could not drop everything to get on a plane and take off and go to a funeral because the person is, pay attention to anyone, the person is dead. It doesn't matter if I go to a funeral for a dead person because they do not know that I'm there. They can't feel me standing there. Lord have mercy. I'm sorry. I apologize. We're on a web page. I want to show you guys now.